The Creator Mindset by Nir Bashan. Part 1. What is the Creator Mindset? An overview of the creative revolution about to take place in business. Chapter 1. Creativity for Non-Creative People I started my first company when I was 9 years old. I mean, calling it a company is probably a very generous description. My friend Richard and I needed money to fund a very serious pursuit. We needed to buy baseball cards and fast food, which when you're nine years old is a big deal. Our families were living paycheck to paycheck and could not afford to hand out any extra money, and so we knew that we had to take action ourselves. Richard and I started a company with the operating agreement of a handshake. We had stumbled on what we thought was the best idea in the world, something that would bring in limitless amounts of money and make us rich beyond our wildest dreams. We were going to go door-to-door washing cars. We quickly raided the garage and kitchen for supplies. We used hand soap as car washing soap. He found a bucket. I had a ratty old hose that leaked. His mom had thrown out a vacuum cleaner that was putting out more smoke than anything else and barely sucked anything in. But none of that mattered because our plan was perfect. We put our inventory together and found that we had just enough supplies for our first wash. All we needed was that first client. It wasn't easy because we had no idea what we were doing. How could we get someone to let us wash a car for money? It was a high mountain to climb. Our second hurdle? How much to charge clients? We had no idea what we could get for a car wash. $20? two dollars? What would people pay for this service? We were clueless. Our third hurdle? If they opened the door, what would we say? How would that work? Who would talk first, me or Richard? It was far too much to figure out in advance, and so we did what any could would have done in our case. We jumped in blind. We would figure it out along the way. We thought, hey, what can possibly go wrong? Off we went, door to door, to face countless rejections. Doors slammed. People thought we were nuts. Two kids knocking on the door with a hodgepodge of cleaning supplies saying that they wanted to wash your car. Who could blame people for slamming the door? And we were asking people to hand over their keys. Richard and I sat on the sidewalk after an entire day of hearing no, no, no. It was a dark moment. All seemed lost. But soon, all our thoughts turned to figuring out how we needed just one person to say yes, and after that, the floodgates to wealth would open. I will never forget it as long as I live. It was a late Saturday afternoon, and my best friend looked at me and asked, What now? It was a defining moment of my youth that set me up to be the man I am today. Life is full of critical, what now moments. And the way you react means far more than what has happened. This was a critical juncture in which a choice had to be made. A creative choice. It was then and there that I was forced to decide what to do. And those decisions bred the first seeds of a lifetime of developing, tweaking, and tinkering with a formula that today I call the creator mindset. It's a way of thinking that I am certain will change your life forever. I know because it has certainly changed mine and those of my clients all over the world. JetBlue, Microsoft, the NFL, EA Sports, American Airlines, AT&T, and many, many others. The creator mindset introduces a new way of thinking that is not taught anywhere else. Some folks already have it, and you probably know a few of them. It's that business owner who put out a coupon and got a host of new clients. It's that engineering firm that did a big pro bono job and then secured a host of new accounts. It's the company that gives you points for every dollar you spend and then gives away its product or service for free. All these examples make you think, how did he or she or they think of that? I wish I could do that. Well, The time for wishing and wanting is over. It's time to get serious about training your mind to think creatively. And that's exactly what this book and program will teach you. The first and most important step in this process is believing one thing. Everything about creativity can be learned. 
Far too many people believe deep down that they're not creative. I see it often when giving keynotes or consulting with clients. It depresses me because folks always think that it is someone else who's creative, never them. Perhaps you are one of those people who believe that they are not creative. But understanding the concept that creativity is a tool, a tool like any other, will go a long way. And understanding that creativity can be learned just like anything else will put your mind at ease. You can learn to think creatively. It's just that so little time and energy is spent on developing a roadmap to teach creativity as a tool. We are programmed to develop the analytical mind through the many institutions that exist today to propel analytical agendas. We as a society have shifted away from the creative mind and at a shocking peril. For instance, we see this as clear as day when it comes to medicine. Modern medicine is so concerned with the physical instead of the mental because it's much easier to mend a broken bone than it is to mend a broken mind. Broken bones and physical injuries are tangible. We can see, feel, and touch them, and that is comfortable, familiar, and apparent. It's simple to prove this and say to others, look, I fixed the broken arm, but you cannot show someone that you've improved a person's way of thinking. Creativity is the same. It's marginalized simply because quantification of creativity isn't possible. I'm here to show you that you can see creativity just as clearly as you see sales at the end of the quarter. You just need to train your mind to be able to see in a different way. I know that this is a revolution in thinking. And I think it's fair to say that you're probably starting to doubt this, but I need you to stick with me. Sure, this might represent a departure from where you feel comfortable and from what is familiar, but that's okay. Why? Because as you will learn later in this book, comfort isn't all it's cracked up to be. Out of all animals on earth, we have been bestowed with the most amazing device that has ever been created. Not our sense of sight, not our sense of smell, not even our opposable thumbs, although having an opposable thumb is pretty awesome. Instead, the most impressive device that we have as humans is the brain. And what makes the human brain unique is its ability to be both logical and creative, which really are two ways of thinking that are as different as anything can be, yet amazingly, they live together within our brains. In one place. How incredible. This power to alternate our thinking between the analytical and the creative at will may seem unimpressive at first, but it makes us unique because we are the only animals on earth that can do it. It gives us the ability to move creativity forward in our thoughts, and this is important to realize because the creative mindset really does introduce a revolutionary biological shift in the brain. In recent decades, scientists have uncovered a phenomenon in the human brain known as neuroplasticity. This amazing discovery has taught us that our brains literally can change. New synapses can connect as we take on new knowledge, neurons throughout the brain can break old connections and make new ones, and brand new cells are always being created. This shift to thinking about the brain as a changing organism is revolutionary because until these discoveries were made, Most scientists thought that the brain was fixed, meaning that after childhood, the brain remained unchanged and was unable to learn something new. But we now know that this is not the case. It turns out that the brain has the ability to change throughout our lives almost on the fly as it learns and interprets new information. Think about that for a moment. How incredibly powerful is that? All it takes to activate this change is the will to learn something new. The declaration that you make today while reading these words on this printed page or tablet or while listening to audio can change your life profoundly. Theodore Hertz said, if you will it, it is no dream. Turns out he was right. You just have to will it. This knowledge you accept can exercise your brain into new and different levels of fitness. 
the structure of the brain will change as it ingests new and different ways to learn, to solve problems, and to grow. It turns out that indeed you can teach an old dog new tricks. And not only that, our brains can physically rearrange themselves according to the input to which we are exposed. <laughs>